hasn't played him more. And, and that could apply to one or two of the other players we're going to look at today as well. But complete performance and worrying for everybody else. Because you're going to look... I mean, we could have picked four or five players, couldn't we, to, yeah. to, to actually look at and their individual performance. And you're going to look at one who hasn't been used or seen as much, maybe for you know injury reasons as well at times, over the last... Well, certainly this season. Well, I think everyone at Manchester City and the fans have all missed David Silva. But today, I want to talk about the other Silva, Bernardo Silva. And I thought he was brilliant today. And in particular, he was just... Everything about him was just a joy to watch. It's interesting, isn't it? Because Pep, Pep in that interview there said, you know, it was like us of two or three <laughs> years ago. And, and so much of their tactics, and Danny highlighted the fullbacks coming inside a bit like that. If you just go back a couple of years to when City last won the title and Bernardo Silva's influence there, you know, 31 starts and five sub appearances. Um, if, if they can start him more, the evidence is there. Look, I think it takes a lot of pressure off Kevin De Bruyne. Mm. And that's what he comes in. He kind of stepped up today and he was like, Kevin De Bruyne, you go and play your role because it's unfamiliar, but I'll take a bit more responsibility. And that's what he did. He was just simple, just kept everything moving. And like I said, Chelsea couldn't get near him. He was just outstanding. I think they still look good defensively as well, which when they've played more attacking at times, they've looked vulnerable. Yeah. They didn't today. And he's another reason for that, because he also does so much going the other way as well. It was a complete performance. So if it's a complete performance, <clears throat> which you both agree on, how can you analyse Chelsea here? I mean, can you <laughs> criticise Chelsea or do you just have to go, do you know what, hands up, they were just by far the better team? Well, you can always applaud brilliant. He spoke after his current, he said, any build or rebuild takes pain, pain behind the scenes and pain on the pitch occasionally. Do, from what you saw today, do they look like a rebuilding job in the middle of one? Yeah. Um, look, when he first came in, he had the youngsters, he couldn't bring anyone, buy anyone, bring them in. Um, and he did really well with the youngsters. The next part of his project was to buy and he spent £200 million. Now he has to bring that all together and add in the winning mentality. I think today they got beaten by the better team by far. But the worrying thing is that at Chelsea, when you're given a war chest and now it's, you know, they've lost four out of the last six, that's the more worrying issue. But you've got to give him time. There's a lot of new players on that. They have to gel. Um, and Frank will get them doing... He'll eventually get them gelling. Yeah, very quickly, do you think he knows his best 11? Is there such a thing as actually as a best 11 in modern football? I think he does. Improve. Wasn't the best afternoon to do the post-match interviews <laughs> outside, was it? Um, and it wasn't the best first half. It was very dull. You both picked a Leicester playmaker, though, that impressed you, starting with James Madison. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of creative players, especially number 10s, and uh, I think Madison today was really, really good. I think the best number 10s, actually, were everyone else. And you see, like, I think Burkamp was the best at it. Messi, they kind of go walking. Everyone thinks they're switching off, but they're not. While everybody else is moving, you just ghost into little pockets and pick up the ball. You know, you don't have to do a lot. You just have to use your intelligence. Madison for you, Tielemans for you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm be being a little bit picky, but ultimately Newcastle's problem is their lack of creativity at the other end. Lack of creativity. Or lack of goals. Lack of, uh, and lack of goals. You think you there is an area that they can exploit a bit more. Yeah, I watched them at Brentford, actually, and um, they're at the best when they simply get the ball out wide and it crosses into the box, and they've got the players to do that. But for me, it's just the anticipation, which we'll, we're about to see now, itself a tapping. And if Jamie Vardy played for Newcastle, they would have got three goals because that's the type of striker and the runs and the determination and the proactiveness of his runs that Newcastle don't have. No, for whatever reason it is... Is it belief, not... Karen, do you think? Is it more belief than quality? I just don't think they're gelling, you know. They only seem to go for it and put those crosses in the latter part of the game. Yeah. And it was the same against Brentford. Um, Reactive you know, to the route, yeah. Well, you've got the players. You've got Murphy, Fraser, Yedlin, and, you know, you've got Joe Linton, Wilson, Carroll, big players. So, so maximum to come back. Yeah. To put the ball in and give those players the opportunity to go and get the crosses and the headers and the opportunities in there, but doesn't seem to be clicking. I mean, and that's the thing. They've got the players who can cross the ball, and Callum Wilson is, is their goal scorer. They've got big players, as, as in big physical players like Joel Linton and Andy Carroll, as you say. It's, it's a mindset thing. It may be Chelsea to come back and have a run with the squad they've got. I suppose the key thing, then, is not to overreact to either every win or every defeat. Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's just so unpredictable. But um, for me, after watching 
City today, especially, you know, their clean sheets. I know they didn't get say, but their clean sheets the last few weeks, how they've really tightened up and how they played. That um, I think also January... <laughs> Tough lad is Kieran Tierney. Thanks to Danny and Karen. Uh, some sad news today. The Jerry and the Pacemakers singer Jerry Marsden has died at the age of 78. He was an icon for all Liverpool fans with his version of You'll Never Walk Alone, adopted, of course, by the cop. Good night.